Hey, fellow Mathers, before we get into this episode, we want to share with you how you can get access to free content, professional learning that will keep your students engaged and doing the math that matters. Get ready to go to this link, mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. That's right. Registration is open for the free Math is Figure Outable challenge that's starting May 15th and runs to the 17th at 7 p.m. Central. We're going to have three nights jam-packed with learning and routines that you can take straight to your classroom. In these challenges, we have a great time. We do some math, talk about classroom experiences, give away super cool bonuses and prizes. You won't just walk away with routines that are naturally engaging and encourage your students to think mathematically. You'll also have a chance to win over 6 k worth in prizes, including a few virtual PD sessions for your school. I'll be joined by my wonderful co-host, Kim, and special guest, Jenna Laib. You can register at mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge for a fantastic learning experience. That's mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. Now on to the show. <laughs> hey, fellow mathematicians. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast where math is figure outable. I'm Pam. And I'm Kim. And you found a place where math is not about memorizing and mimicking, where you're waiting to be told or shown what to do. But we can make it be about sense making and noticing patterns and reasoning using mathematical relationships. Let's mentor students to think and reason like mathematicians. Not only are algorithms really not helpful in teaching mathematics, but rotely repeating steps actually keep students from being the mathematicians they can be. All right, Kim. Y'all, we record a few podcast episodes at the same time, and I'll just <laughs> I'll just say right now, Kim and I are a little punchy. So at it's this always point, the best ones. <laughs> it's, it should be the best one here um, if we can make sense of what we're doing. Neither of us slept well last night, and so it's this going to be amazing. Um, I can't wait to tell you, <laughs> Kim. Hey, I want to start off by talking to you. Uh, I was just in Florida. I had a blast in Florida. I worked You've been some- traveling a ton. I have been traveling a ton. Yeah. I'm about to travel some more, which is, I like to travel. I love meeting new people. I really like hearing about how math is going in different classrooms around the world. It's yeah. super, super cool. Um, and I worked with some amazing educators in Florida. Um, yeah. Like I said, I had a great time. Um, I was at the Florida, um, it's FAMS. I should know what it stands for, but it's their supervisor. It's their leader conference. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I gave a couple sessions at their leader conference, saw John San Giovanni. He's a great guy. We had a chat. And Alicia Charbonneau is one of their leaders in the state. And I had mentioned in one of my sessions, or maybe both of them, that I am not, that that I am both the how and the what. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But she came up to me afterwards and Alicia, shout out to you. You did a great job organizing everything. And thanks for, thanks for treating me so well in Florida. She said, Hey, Pam, Pam, you got to add to your, your, your bit here. It's not just the how and the what. But you also have to add the why. Well, hmm. Kim, I've been thinking about that. Yeah. Um, I've been thinking about that a lot. So let's parse out what I talk about with the how and the what. Mm-hmm. And then let's kick around this idea of adding the why. Sure. So the reason that I've been talking about how and what mm-hmm. is that I think it's kind of important to acknowledge that in math professional learning, it's important that we not only talk about how to teach but mm-hmm. that we also talk about what to teach. Right. So what do I mean by how? Um, I think a lot of good people are talking about how to teach. I think there are some fantastic number talks people out there that are talking about how to do number talks well. Uh, I think that uh, Peter Lillydahl and Building Thinking Classrooms is really talking about how, uh, if you think about his Building Thinking Classroom, it's it's all how. It's uh, you know vertical non-permanent surfaces and how you answer questions and randomly grouping students. And there's a lot of really good things to consider about how trying to think of some other examples, Um, some other instructional routines that are out there. We're talking about how, so there's, there's a lot of questioning. There's, there's a lot of really good people and uh, talking about how to teach Uh, the teaching practices. The eight essential teaching practices are all about how to teach, Mm -hmm. right? The, Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. mathematical practice standards for students are all about kind of the things that students are doing um, as they're thinking and reasoning like mathematicians. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of teacher PD from their schools is about strategies for teaching, like grouping students and yeah. Yep. Yep. Even looking at data, it's all Mm -hmm. about how, Mm -hmm. um, 
and there's lots of that. And I think we need it. Sure. I think I'm also about how I think you and I have talked lots about how, especially in the last couple of uh, podcasts that we've just put out episodes. We just put out. We, we, we also talk about how, in fact, in my online workshops, we have seven module workshops. We ha- oh, that's funny. Cause we have seven right now, seven module workshops. We're about to have an eighth in those seven modules. We devote a whole module to how mm-hmm. in a really unique way. I'll maybe just mention really quickly. We, um, uh, c- when we create those online asynchronous workshops, I do a live workshop with uh, real people and it's two- <laughs> not fake As people. opposed to fake people. <laughs> <laughs> you always make fun of when I say that because it's always <laughs> dumb when I say it. All right. So I got people like t- teachers in the room and we do a two day live workshop and we film it and then we turn that into the async workshop. And that yep. turns into five of the modules of those seven. Yep. And the uh, of those other two modules, one of them is completely devoted to teacher moves. It's completely devoted to the how. We talk about equity moves and talk moves and identity moves and uh, questioning moves. And we really parse out and, and uh, we do it in, I think, a super cool, unique way yep. where what we do is we take video of those two live days that, that were in the five modules and we grab moments where I did those teacher moves and we can exemplify those two with say, Hey, you actually just experienced all these teacher moves. And we put them like right in a row, bam, bam, bam. Like uh, for, we pick a teacher move, like uh, getting students to talk to each other, not just to the teacher. And we'll put together moments that they just experienced over those two days where they'll hear me say, oh, so you, you disagree with James. Well, tell James, tell James that. Like, and I'll actually move my hand, like tur- turn and talk to James. And then the, the, it'll, the clip will stop. And then it'll be a new clip. And I'll say uh, something like, can you, can you restate what, what uh, Elise just said? Oh, you can't. Well, go ahead and ask Elise what she said. You don't remember what she said? Well, go ahead and ask her. Or you're not sure what she said? Go ahead and ask her. And then it'll stop and go to another one. And so they'll see like a montage of seven different times in those two days where that teacher move happened with them. And then also in one of the modules, we'll also always put um, a student, uh, uh, at least one or two classroom um, examples where it's happening with students. So the the thing that we're, if it's building powerful multiplication, there have multiplications happening with students. And then uh, we'll also include not just me doing that teacher move, but that classroom teacher doing that teacher move. And so they've already seen it to get at the math and now they're seeing it to get at the how and the Mm -hmm. teacher moves. And so we, we think that's kind of a unique way of really doing the how. So we do the how, right? We we Mm -hmm. also advocate that it's important to talk about the how, but you might've just noticed when do we do the how in those workshops after we do the what? Mm -hmm. So first in the workshops, in those two days of the live workshop, in those five modules, we get into the math. What do I mean by what? I mean the mathematics. We actually build participant mathematics. Y'all, it doesn't matter what grade level I'm working with. I really try hard. I plan purposefully that everyone in the room will learn some math. Um, and yeah. so let's say that we're doing building powerful division. We don't, we don't start the workshop with how should you build division with students? We start the workshop with a problem string where teachers are diving into division and they're thinking hard about solving problems. And we build relationships about like it, in that particular workshop in division, or if it's proportional reasoning, proportional reasoning, we really dive into the mathematics and we get clear about the landscape of learning. Thank you, Kathy Fosno. We get clear about the landscape of learning for that math in that workshop. So if it's building addition for young learners, we get clear about the math that students need to own to, to, to build counting and counting strategies into additive reasoning for those young learners. If it's uh, building linear, pow- powerful linear functions, we get at the math of what students need to know and own to build powerful linear functions. So I, when I say to, to people, hey, I'm about the how and the what, I would suggest that we're kind of unique that way. The workshops that we do are a bit unique in that we are really helping teachers build the mathematics for them so that then we can talk about how they can build it for their students. But we get really clear on the big ideas, models, strategies, concepts, properties that are involved in the mathematics they teach so that they are clear in their heads. Now, we don't do that by telling. It's not about, hey, here's this pre 
created chart that I've created. Now just stare at it. And there, you got all that? Did you just like by osmosis get all of that learning? No, no. We dive into problems, solve problems. We do what we want them to do with students where they are actually doing the same kind of work, solving problems, uh, making, we make it visible. We point at it and discuss it, compare next problem, rich tasks, all of that discussion to really build teachers mathematics um, so that then they can build their student mathematics. So we're all about the how and the what, but then Kim, then Alicia said to me, Pam, it's not just about the how and the what it's also about the why. Yeah. I'm thinking about that. What did you think when I first said that? Yeah. When you, when you first mentioned it to me, I wondered if she meant like when kids say, uh, why am I ever going to need this? Right. Like that, that's a, that could be a question. And the older the students get, right. Some of them are snarky and they're like, why do I need to know this? And so am I ever going to use this? Yeah. Right. And, and so you and I got talking a little bit about like how we respond to that. And, and I think I shared with you that for me, it's less about the specific topic or question that uh, the kids are learning about in that moment. It's kind of more about mathematics in general and how things are connected, or maybe it's about, um, kind of the eight practice standards and the behaviors of problem solving and tackling something and finding connections um, between what we're doing. Are you saying that when kids say to you, Miss Montague, when am I going to use this? That mm-hmm. you would say back to them, well, it's not about this particular, I don't know, problem that we just solved. It's not about knowing that the answer is 42. Right. Which is the answer to the question of the universe. Um <laughs> But it's more about uh, that you can now do uh, this this thing. You can have looked at this pattern and you've noticed a relationship. Hey, you'll be able to yeah, look at be. patterns mm-hmm. and use them, uh, you know, later in your life. Or, yeah. or you could say, hey, it's it's more that you can now model with mathematics. Like we've right. been working with this model, so now you have gained something that you could use in the future modeling with mathematics. Yeah, or, absolutely. hey, in this problem, we just solved uh, this problem using tools strategically. Mm-hmm. What you just learned is how to use this tool strategically. Now you have some sense of, hey, when I'm solving a problem in the future, I could use a tool strategically. Something like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Kind of what you're saying. Yep. So an answer, if, stud- if students ask you why, you're saying Alicia's Alicia's why to me could have been when students say, when am I ever going to use this? Or why, yeah, am I, yeah, why are yeah. we learning this kind of thing? Yeah. But we can say back to students, oh, it's about, it's about your brain. In fact, Kim... I am thinking hard right now, trying to remember somebody just said, I can't think of who it was just a day or two ago. I was talking to somebody who have I been talking to. Hmm. Somebody just said to me that when kids say, when are we going to use this? That and it was a guy and it was a guy. So guy, whoever you were out there said, I answer students. You will use that every single day, the rest of your life because your brain just grew. Yeah. And so when are you going to use this? That brain, that brain you just created, because now your brain is thinking more sophisticatedly, you're going to use that brain the rest of your life every single day. That's nice. I kind of like that answer. Yeah, yeah. I just, Man, yeah. I can't remember. I can't believe I can't remember who that was. So well, maybe, maybe they can contact you. Yeah. Whoever, whoever that was, please let me know. I want to give you credit. I want to give you credit for saying that because yeah, that is that's brilliant. It's a really yeah. nice, a nice way of answering that question that I think a lot of us get, especially the older that you teach. Yeah. Well, older you teach and... And if you are teaching math as fake math, you're going to get that question a whole yes. lot more often. Yep. Yeah. I'll just say, Kim, we don't get that question anymore. <laughs> no. Like ever. Yeah. Like, yeah. We don't, yeah. we don't get it from students. We don't get it from teachers um, ever. Cause it's, we're just diving in and just having so much fun with it that yeah. they're not, yeah. it's not, a, it's not, it's not the drudgery of when are we ever going to use this? They're like, Oh, ask me another one. Give me another yeah. one. Like that's more yeah, kind yeah. of where we are. But you said you didn't think that that's what Alicia meant. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you just, were like, I don't yeah. think so. And I don't think that was her why. I don't think that's what she meant by why. Yeah. And I think the next thing I asked you was, <laughs> do you think she might mean know your why? Like, like Kim, we almost didn't do this episode because you said, I was no, like, Pam, absolutely not. <laughs> we're not talking about that. And I was like, what, why would we not talking about the why? So tell, tell well, everybody why because, you were pushing I mean, back. It's just a thing, right? Like teachers do the hardest, hardest job. And you know, when, when in times of struggle, like when people say, just remember your why it's, it's a little like vomit inducing, like te- <laughs> teachers, Teachers are, are great people and they like love kids and they whatever, but you shouldn't have to take on just a, an unimaginable amount of junk just because you like kids and 
people, people, it's my opinion. It doesn't have to be yours. That people should not just throw out the phrase, know your why so that you can have to suck it up for more stuff. Uh, absolutely. Not, absolutely. And I think especially, right. especially now um, where we're just all coming, kind of coming out of the COVID crazy yeah. where teachers were asked to do untenable things yeah, yeah, and yeah. the expectation was crazy. And I think what you were telling me is that you saw a lot of teachers kind of being patted on the head yes. and almost, almost like kind of spanked a little bit. Like, yes. like remember your why, come on, yep. suck it yep. up, do yep. the thing. Uh, and and so let's be really clear. That is not what we are suggesting yeah. um, that we're going to do in this episode. We are not telling you teachers, just remember your why and everything will be okay. I do think that when life gets hard, it can be helpful to remember why we went into education. Um, but not that that's, that's a helpful thing for us to dredge up with inside ourselves. I don't know that it's ever a helpful thing for someone to pat you no. on the head and say, Remember your why, sucker. You went into teaching. Yep. It's, you know, like suck it up. No, that's that's never helpful. So that's not that is that is not. So, no, not what we thought. So what do you think Alicia meant when she? Well, when she said it to me, my first wonder was if she was saying teachers need to understand why to change, hmm. why algorithms are not our goal, why they're not good. Like we even say in the beginning that rotely repeating steps actually keeps students from being the mathematicians they can be, but they need, teachers need to understand that, yeah. um, that why okay. teaching for reasoning is better than answer getting. And something about the, the change thing, you know, Kim, I was just recently in a workshop where um, somebody suggested never tell people to change. People don't mm -hmm. like to hear that. Like just right. the word change, people are kind of bristle. I, I don't know, listeners, does, do you agree with that? When when I say, hey, change, do you go, well, who are you to tell me to change? You're like, sure. what do you think you know? Or, or you might, even even if you respect the person, you might be like, don't tell me to change. Like change is hard and life is hard enough and I'm doing the best I can. And you can almost have kind of the response of, don't you, don't you believe I'm doing the best I can? Like, don't, mm -hmm. don't tell me to change. Um, and so that I, I kind of took that to heart, you know, I, I've started to think about some of the ways that I say things and because I, I was kind of all, usually up for change. Um, but I know that everybody's kind of crazy like me. They don't like to <laughs> change everything on a dime. Like if I ever saw something that I really thought was a good idea, uh, I'll give you a short example. Um, I was a very young teacher. I went to my first NCTM regional conference. Um, I heard Gail Burrell give a workshop. I didn't know who she was at the time. Um, I walked into her session. I had just been to two or three sessions. And I, honestly, I'll, I'll be clear. I was not that impressed with. So as a young teacher, I was really hungry. I had I had been in a, a really amazing environment in my first school that I taught in. And I had just moved. Um, I was in my third year of teaching. I was in a brand new school. It was a, it, They were very nice people, but it was not quite the collegial, um, a, a generative where we were working together and kind of coming up with idea. It, it, it wasn't collegially working together atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I was missing that. And I thought, well, I'm going to go to this conference and I'm going to get it there. And the first few sessions were not that. And I was kind of disappointed. And I, you know, I was like, ah, I, you know, I really want to learn. I don't know that I would have said I wanted to change, but I, I maybe I wanted to change math class from the way it had been, the way I had taken it, the way, mm -hmm. you know, I had been taught to me. I'll never forget sitting in her session where she started to do um, the guess your age task. So if you've been in our Building Powerful Linear Functions online workshop, you've seen us do that guess your age task, where um, basically you, you throw out a famous person and you say, how old do you think they are? And then the person guesses, and then you get throw out another famous person. And so now you've got a list of a few famous people. You've guessed how old they are. And then she started to, then uh, after we'd guessed, I don't know, 10 or so famous people's ages, then she said, well, did you know that this famous person is actually this old? And then this famous person is actually this old. And you can kind of almost hear the room, you know, ooh, ah, and oh, I got that one right. And, oh, it was way off. And who even is that? And, you know, kind of people are, are back and forth. And then at the end of that, she said, looked at us with that, that calm Gail Burrell. Oh, I love Gail. She's awesome. Just calm, quiet, kind of cocked her head. And she goes, y'all, how would you, I don't know if she said y'all, she's from the North. Probably didn't say y'all. <laughs> But she said, how would you know if you're a good guesser? <gasps> Kim, I was like, oh my gosh, like that. I, I, I instantly, I just had this flash of insight and I was like, this is an amazing task because we could talk about, you know, you're a good guesser when your input is equal to the output 
and and if you could see my hands right now, I just went over the same amount. I went up and I was like, that is like the line Y equals X. She's going for the line Y equals X. Like the parent function of all parent functions. She's, she's going to build the line Y equals. And, and I had thought about the fact that all the functions were built off of the parent function, the line Y equals X, but I didn't, I never considered how I could build the line Y equals X. I just started yeah. there. I was like, Hey, here's the line Y equals X. Let's build the rest of them from there. Kind of what we don't advocate, right? Like just right. telling kids something and then, but I never even had thought about how you could build the line Y equals X. And in that moment of mathematical insight, I was willing to change. I went right. back to my classroom and I, on a dime, I did that activity for like three days. Now I didn't take, it didn't take three days to do Gail's version of it, but I did it. And then I built on it and then I built on it. I innovated, innovated, innovated. And then I took a deep breath and I was like, okay, back to what I usually do. Cause you know, I yeah. get it. I can only stretch it so far, but, but in that moment I was totally willing to change. So when Alicia said, why do teachers need to change? I thought, I, I like, how do I tell, how do I, how do I help teachers understand that for me, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm always on the look for that flash of insight where I go, Oh, that, that would help everybody own this thing. Oh, mm-hmm. let's do that. Like, I want to own that the way this person just kind of helped me own it. Like, I, Oh, I could do that for my students. Yeah. So I kind of got excited about, well, could I, could I help? teachers understand is that if that's what she means could i help teachers understand that the why to change is well frankly so that they can math they can help their students math the way we just math so kim when i do a workshop when i do a presentation even a keynote people are always telling me your keynotes are really different and i'm like what do you mean and they're like you're so interactive like you do math with people oh hey there's that's back to the what right like yeah. i always do some math but in that doing that math, it is to build content. It is to really get like the math out there, the what of the content. But in a huge way, it's so that people have an experience in mathing. It's not just so that you learn another strategy for multiplication. It really is so that you, if that's my first task that I do, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the presentation, in the keynote or whatever, if the first thing I do is a multiplication problem string, my goal at the end of that problem string is to be able to say, hey, hey, this last problem we just solved, this last problem, if if when you walked in the door today, if you wouldn't have solved it this way, you just mathed. Like you just did real math because I didn't, I didn't tell you steps to do. I gave you problems in a certain order. We did a problem string and you found a pattern as we were doing that string of problems because of how we were making things visible and how we were discussing and sharing strategies that by that last problem, your brain was thinking in a different way. You were literally were creating new connections and you were able to use that pattern to solve that problem in a way you'd never thought about. Bam, that's mathing. Mm -hmm. So I always do that first experience, A, to get at content, but B, to get at that why so that teachers can go, wait a minute, like that's, that's mathing? Mm -hmm. Like what we just did? That's what mathematicians do? Huh, well, I just did that. Are you, are you saying I could do that with my kids? And, and then I say, yeah, you can do it with your kids just like that. Like mm-hmm. you can teach. In fact, I'll boldly say you can teach all math that way. Like all math, as long as it's not social. So we've talked about that a little bit. As long as it's that logical math, which is most of math, we can teach all math by having kids reason, building their brains to think and reason more. So if, if her why was the teachers need to know the why to change, why algorithms aren't good, why teaching for reasoning is better than answer getting. I would suggest because it's real math. It is the thing that mathematicians do. And so um, I I am about the what and the how and that why, that why, because we can actually math the way mathematicians do. Um, So Alicia, what did you mean when you said the why? We're we're sort of curious, curious. Either way, though, well, I, I, Kim, before I, I was going to kind of finish up, is there anything else you wanted to add in? Uh, I was just going to say, as you, you, you kind of went there, but the, what you are trying to do for other people and with other people in workshops and presentations and whatever is kind of duplicate that experience that you got as a young teacher where somebody put you in a position to find your own need to change. You saw something that moved you. You latched onto that. 
And instead of you telling people why they need to change, which never works, <laughs> you're also trying to do the same thing. And we're in, in whatever in whatever setting they're in, put them in a position where they are motivated to change because they see a different outcome that's possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I really like how you said that because, because I was able to have experiences that actually changed the way I thought that is yep. exactly what I'm t- attempting to do with the, what the, how, and the why yep. is give teachers that experience. Yeah. Nice. All right. So Alicia, what did you mean? At, but either way, whatever you meant, we need to think about the, how the, what, and I'm thinking my version of why, but for sure, for sure, some why. Y'all, let's affect the way we teach. See, I just didn't say change. <laughs> let's tweak. I don't know. I'm trying not to say change because I don't want to make it this big whole thing. Let's all help our students grow their brains to think and reason like mathematicians just a little bit better than we were yesterday. How's that? Is that better than change? Sounds great. (laughs) All right, cool. Y'all, thank you for tuning in and teaching more and more real math. To find out more about the Math is Figureoutable movement, visit mathisfigureoutable.com. Let's keep spreading the word that math is figureoutable. Thank you for listening and making math more figureoutable. To learn even more, make sure you register for our free challenge at mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. You are not going to want to miss the evenings of May 15th through 17th, starting at 7 p.m. Central. Math teaching, math teaching, go register now. That's mathisfigureoutable.com slash challenge. Join us to make math more and more figureoutable. And if you can't join live, register and we'll send you access to the recordings. We'll see you there.